What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the channel. I've been absent for a little bit. It's been probably a good three, four weeks since I've uploaded a video. Um, I think the last video I uploaded was uh, me, the process of me doing the um, air tank for the Mazda Mini truck. If you haven't, go back and watch that one. It's the one before this one. It's kind of like a midway to being done type of video. It's not a full finish on that video. What you'll have to do is go down to the shorts and I posted the rest of the progress and the finished result of that air tank in the short videos. It's only like, it's less than two minutes long, so it's a quick one. Um, just didn't have enough time to actually do a full video of that finished air tank. Customer needed it pretty quickly, so I just had to rush and get it done and get it to the customer. That way he can get it installed. He had a pretty much had a show coming up and uh, he had to get it back and installed and all the other stuff. So sorry about that, but yeah, just go down below, watch it, the short video of it. Um, so I've been busy working pretty much on my own stuff. Um, I've got a couple of customer projects here in the shop, um, but they're kind of in limbo right now. So I haven't made a painting video for a while. I've been pretty much a mechanic, <laughs> a little bit of painting here and there, but pretty much a mechanic um, these last few weeks, trying to get this SRT4 up and running at least, not fully finished, but get it to where it's running and I can enjoy it for the summer. And then I can, you know, I'm gonna end up repainting the whole vehicle. So I wanted to pick up the camera and uh, actually start showing you guys the process of where I'm at and what I've done so far um, from, I think the last video I posted was me taking the motor out and getting that all taken care of, the engine bay and getting it painted, whatnot. So I'll post all that, I'll kind of filter that in this video here. Uh, but now we're pretty much on the opposite end. Um, last few weeks I've been spending time, um, the engine was out, totally gutted all the accessories off went through started replacing some stuff um, got like a new alternator um, went through all the engine bay bolts that i could find and replace bought those brand new um, just going through the engine bay making sure everything's either new or cleaned up um, and then getting the motor back in obviously and getting that ready so this is what it looks like now kind of but, um Finally got the engine in here. If you guys haven't seen the engine bay, it is a custom, pretty much like a, almost like a Lamborghini orange, but it's got a blue um, pearl top coat over it. So in the sunlight, it shifts to like a blue and an orange, but it's got a lot of uh, pearl in it and a lot of uh, mini flake in it. So it's gonna look really cool out on the side out here. And here it's just a pretty much orange. So got the motor in and got pretty much everything in here as far as the engine part wise. Um, showing you guys back here. This is gonna be the exit for the dump for the turbo and the wastegate. You can see where the turbo and the wastegate over there and it runs underneath everything. It comes up right here. Um, so pretty much ready for that, but, um, you can see down there a new alternator I put on. I just went through and just pretty much refreshed everything that I could. Um, new motor mounts, upper and lower and everything else. 
Um, this is, I ended up doing a full new um, fuel system in this car. Went to a Walbro 450 in the tank and then negative six um, feed and a return line and a new regulator. So I'm not 100% where I'm gonna mount that yet. I almost need to get the turbo stuff and the exhaust stuff on to see how much room I have. It's gonna be over here somewhere. I need to figure out how much room I'm gonna have once the turbo is fully mounted and actually where it's gonna be at. So that's just why this is hanging there. Anyways, the intakes and the rails and stuff, the injectors aren't on it anyway, so I'm not really to the point of figuring out how I wanna mount that. So, but we are doing a whole new fuel system. I went through and painted like the engine bracket. Um, I actually painted the transmission too. It was really bad looking, which you won't see mo a lot of this um, just because the turbo sits right here. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff in the way, but it does look a lot better. Um, did not paint the engine block or the head. One of those things I wish I would have done, but I don't know honestly how long this engine's gonna last on this setup being more fuel that's going to get um, thrown at it, more air, more boost. It's got 150,000 miles on this engine, so I'm not really going too crazy on the engine part of it as far as what it looks like um, because I have a feeling um, I'm going to try to make this last as long as I can, but once I crank this sucker up, I think this is just probably going to either lift the head or you know it's going to send a rod flying um, through the block or whatever, but I did go through and I did grease the whole engine, get most of that gunk, it was really nasty, especially on the oil paint area. Um, went through and I deleted um, engines. They have a balance chain inside of them to keep all the harmonics and everything together. Um, what I did was, uh, if I can find the chain, um, most people, they take the whole mechanism out and they put like a strap kit in there or whatever. Um, and then they just get rid of that pretty much. So what I just, I kept everything in there, but I cut the chain on it. It's a cheap way of doing it without having to put a, like a windage tray in there or a strap kit or whatever, since it's not a built motor. So just cut the chain out of it. Um, what that's gonna do is um, hopefully make this thing last a little bit longer. What happens is, especially with the higher mileage, um, and you're putting more power, so you're putting more stress on the engine. And what that tends to do is, um, those chains are held by a bunch of plastic pieces inside the block, um, kind of where like on the side where your oil pump is. So what can happen is those plastic pieces can break inside your engine and then that chain break and it just, Pretty much destroys your engine so what you do is you just cut that chain off that way it's not running and then you just leave everything in there you know we don't have to worry about a windage tray or anything like that because that just actually happens to help the windage inside the block and the the, uh, the oil pan so that's what i did pretty easy thing to do um so if you're building one of these you want to know some things you can make it you know prolong and still build boost on these things um that's one thing you can do um, to help your engine last a little bit longer. Um, what else did I do? Oh yeah, the clutch. I put a new clutch in it. Um, went with a ACT. Um, it's a street lightweight clutch. Um, I usually do the HD G6, which is a six putt. This is just a street style clutch. It's supposed to feel like stock. The six putt's a little bit heavier. So I'm not gonna be pushing a lot of power out of this thing. I'm probably gonna be like 450, maybe 500, um, if it'll do it. Um, but original clutch still on the car. Um, the car pushed a lot of, you know, it was really torquey with the other setups I had on here. And I, I always wondered if it was a stock clutch or not. Until I went big turbo, then I started to feel it slipping. So, um, so another thing you want to do is make sure, especially when you have everything apart, make sure you have a good enough clutch in there for the power you're going to be pushing, um, or whatever the torque or whatever you want to, you want to call it. Because um, this is just the stock clutches; they don't hold anything, and it's been in there forever. They're modular clutches; they're pain. Um, they're a lot, they're really heavy, so the leak.
getting an aftermarket clutch is going to help this thing. Um, drivability should be better too. Um, it's going to be a little bit noisier, but that just goes along with, you know, building an engine and building a turbo car um, with power. So um, another thing I've done, um, pretty much as you guys can see, brackets. The bracket that I modified where the battery used to sit here, cut it, up, painted it up. Um, all new bolts in there. Um, the new wiring harness, it's just kind of, some stuff's plugged in, some stuff's not, just because the engine's not fully together, but it'll get fully tucked. On these harnesses, what's good about these harnesses, it, it tucks everything underneath the intake, intake manifold, so you don't see a lot of wire, so this will all be cleaned up to where you don't see it. Um, obviously, the AC had to get deleted down there. Um, so we don't have AC anymore. I am trying to keep the power steering um, And I'll show you guys what I'm doing right now. I'm in the process of Trying to get this to be you know stay leave this on the car um, Because when you go these some of these turbo kits and things like that depending on what platform you have You get either de delete AC delete power steering delete both And I'm trying to keep at least one of the luxuries because I'm going to be driving this car a lot so I kind of want to keep it. I've had a car, I've had one of these cars without power steering or without AC. AC I can live with, power steering, it's kind of a pain, especially when you start putting a built motor in this thing. It's kind of like pretty much a drag car at that point. So they're not fun to drive on the street, so I'm trying to keep this. And what I'm doing right now is um, I have to modify this bracket. This bracket holds the pulley system for the power steering on this bracket and the lower motor mount down here. So I have to delete it because the intercooler pipe, and you guys see that down there, the intercooler um, inlet for right here that goes to the intake, that bracket sits up against this block right here. So it doesn't clear at all if you just leave that bracket in here. Um, the car that I bought this kit off of had all this deleted, so it was already a, a pretty much full-blown race car, um, and I'm trying to keep it. I think that's the things about doing things like this, and you know, you're making it your your own. So what I'm doing is really trimming this piece down to where I can still keep this to keep the pulley system and all the pulleys for the power steering. So I'm trying to trim this down as much as I can um, because this is a big piece of metal. It's, it's like I said, there's a motor mount down here and then there's two pulleys for that um, power steering pump. So I'm trying to trim it down as far as I can and still wedge that pipe in there without deleting that. Um, and obviously that's gonna get painted um, with it. So it all, even though you don't see it, it's gonna get painted because I'm grinding it. But yeah, that's what I'm doing right now is I'm trimming all that to make that pipe because that pipe's gotta come up all the way up here and that intake's gonna sit like right here. So it's gotta go all the way up here. It's a big, long piece of pipe. Um, it's this pipe right here. So it's gotta go if I can get this in here in one handed. But it's gotta go, I mean it's it's gotta sit at an angle, a crazy angle like that. So that's what I'm doing now. So when you do something like um it's better to cut off a little bit at a time rather than just take big chunks out of it. The only thing I've cut off on this thing are these little, um, the ears. Ears are pretty much hitting on this. It's a big chunk of metal still, but I wanted to do more trimming on this, especially right here in this area, but these ears were definitely hitting that pipe. So I'm gonna have to trim this back. I'm gonna try to belt sand the rest of this flat. Um, there's a lot of material here, as you can see down here. I'm gonna have to get rid of a lot of that down there. But 
that's what I'm doing right now. So not much happening. Um, and also I'm in the process of rerouting the heater core lines because I want to keep heat in this car as well. That's another thing that was deleted on the car that I bought this kit from is, and a lot of guys do this. They, they, they just either weld it shut or they block it shut. And I want to keep heat in this thing because, you know, you know, October, September gets really cold here. So I want to try to at least drive it before it hits winter time. And maybe and sometimes in the winter when it's nicer out, when it's not snowing, I can drive it too. So I want to keep heat in this. Um, so I'm in the process of, that's why this, this hose, I bought this hose, um, the factory um, hard line pipes for the heater core, they go back here. There's two pipes right there, but there's two metal that's a, there's two metal pipes that are welded together by brackets that go right here and they kind of just snake around this edge. And then they're connected from here and down to here. And that's what, down here is your water pump. And then obviously this is your neck for your coolant or you're dropping your coolant in. Um, so this all intermixes and goes back to the heater core. And then there's a line back here too that goes down to the uh, oil cooler line and this is one of the pieces what I had to do is um, cut this the other bracket looked exactly like this but they were welded together with brackets as you can see I, I cut this off because I'm not using this this that hose right here is replacing this essentially and I can use one of these because the one I'm using hugs really tight around this block so the reason why you have to delete that or modify this to your liking if you want to keep your heat in your car is because a turbo sits right here and you don't have much room right here between the exhaust side of the turbo and your um pretty much your your downpipe or your exhaust system because it all shifts it all goes right through here so you got to have enough room here so, like I said, I'm using one of those pipes. It's actually at work. Um, it's gonna get painted with everything else. Um, you don't see it either, but you're gonna see a little bit of it. So I'm gonna paint it this purple color. Um, the valve cover is gonna get painted as well because it's got chips and everything from working on the engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and paint that at the same time. Um, but those two processes, the bracket and the cooler, for the heater hose lines is what I'm working on right now. Um, once I get this bracket cut up and fit with the pipe that's gonna be on here um, and all that working, I can take that off and I can paint everything. So it's gonna be, the valve cover's gonna get painted, that bracket I just showed you guys, and that coolant hard line um, is all gonna get painted purple, the same purple as this. Um, and then I can start putting it back together. And then I can probably put the turbo on um, and keep it on here because this is the only thing that's holding everything else up because all this is underneath the intake manifold. Um, the intake manifold on these curves, I'm having to go back to a factory intake manifold. I got had to take off the custom one I had. It's a JMF, um, it's just a big aluminum sheet metal one. Um, this is the old one. I'll show you guys what the old one looked like, which I'm really bummed out about it because it looked really good. This was the old aftermarket one. These are not cheap by any means, um, but I had to take it off, and we are running a factory intake manifold on the car because of this pipe right here has to bolt up to this over here. So a lot of stuff going on. But as you guys can tell, this is not just a regular old factory intake manifold. I took the, my factory one. Somebody had painted it. They actually spray painted it. And it looked nasty. There was a bunch of oil all, all over it and just grease and dirt. I cleaned it all up really nice. And I actually sanded it down. And I hand polished it. Um, so it came out really, really good. So I think once this is on the car, the turbo... I actually polished, I grinded everything down on the turbo compressor housing and I polished it as well. So I think with all of these two pieces in there and everything being purple and blue, 
Um, the blue that we're going for is this blue right here. It's just like a bright electric blue. Same color as a wayscape. Um, it's gonna look really, really sharp, I think. Um, like I said, it's gonna cover, the intake manifold covers up everything that's right here. So everything will get tucked underneath, underneath here and where you don't see it. Um, all these lines and all this, all these plugs and all this crap. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I just wanna make a short video of what I'm doing and what's taken me forever. Um, I already got everything on the suspension side pretty much done. Um, I'm just keeping the wheels off of this right now. That way it's easier, a little bit easier for me to work on it. Um, but we went ahead and went and bought a new outer tie rods, inner tie rods, uh, steering rack, um, control arms, um, tie rod end links, um, sway bar end links, sway bar, all that stuff back here on the power steering rack side and the uh, subframe side is actually brand new. So the car should drive really nice because um, everything's going to be brand new. So I'm really happy with how that came out um, and how the transmission came out and everything. It just will look, it's going to look really, really clean. Um, and then, like I said, I went through and just any bolt and nut that I could buy and swap out with the old ones just to make things look nice and look new. I'm going ahead and doing that. It just makes everything look really, really nice. So, And also I painted the bracket that holds the uh, computer in here, the brains of the car. I painted that just regular black like everything else. So, But yeah, um, the engine project we have in the shop real quick. So we have a fully blown built Hemi engine. I don't know the specs on it, but it's been in the shop for a while, for a few weeks. Um, it's pretty cool looking. Um, pretty expensive motor right here. Um, this is a customer of mine. He had bought a SEMA car. If you know what SEMA, a big car show in Las Vegas every year, um, where they debut new products, new vehicles, custom stuff. It's a lot of custom stuff companies build cars for the show and he actually bought a car probably it's been probably four or five years ago um, it's been a while he's had it for a while but he bought it really cheap so I think it's an 05 or an 06 um, charger that was done for that show and it had twin turbos on it and stuff and he ended up um, rebuilding the motor this is the motor that came out of it and this is, I think he said this is like rated for a thousand horsepower or something like that with those turbo kit that's on it. Um, so what we're gonna be doing to this, we're gonna be painting the engine block. It's black right now. Um, he's supposed to be bringing me a engine hoist or engine stand. That way I can get this thing up in the air and start working on it. And that's what we're waiting on right now. So this project is kind of in limbo right now. And I'm waiting on the funds from him to start on it and the engine stand to get it up in the air and start working on it. These are the fenders for the same car. It's got this custom graphic going down it. He wants me to try to fix these fenders. Um, they're bowed out really bad because the car is on air ride. And at some point somebody aired it out and just bowed these fenders up pretty bad. So I'm gonna have to do some body work on these to get them right and paint the black and reclear them and get them proper for them. Um, but that's another video. I'm gonna do all this probably at once for you guys. If you wanna know how to um, paint engine blocks, paint, paint transmissions, things like that that you need to know um, what products to use to get your paint to stick, it'll be a good video for that. So. Like I said, this is just waiting on pretty much the funds to do it and the engine stand and we can get going on it. So I'm trying to get my car done here before all that happens um, to come in fruition. Um, so I've got probably two or three days left on this thing to where it's pretty much ready to put fluids in it and get it retuned. Um, putting a new fuel system and stuff in it, it's gotta get a retune um, or recalculate the 
the graph for the injectors and the fuel pump and all that stuff to where the it's going to take it and not have not hate it so that's what i am doing and that's all that's it i mean there's not much going on here guys so that's why i haven't posted anything um, for a while because some of this stuff was just really took a long time it took a long time to degrease that engine it was just really built up um, i went through like 30 bucks worth of degreaser trying to get this thing clean i wish it came out a little bit cleaner but it is fully clean now um, it should be a lot happier <laughs> it doesn't have all that weight of degreaser and um, oil and all that stuff that was caked on there on there anymore so um, yeah it should be really good and really clean um, the a transmission I'll run over that with you real quick um, so the transmission was just as bad as the engine block so going over this really really quick you almost treat this the same way as you would a block on the engine like that I just was talking about because they're both pretty much um, metal um, some blocks are aluminum some blocks are just metal um, so what you want to do is you want to acid wash it if it's not clean like this transmission was dirty so I acid washed the crap out of it um, I use a, a scotch bread scotch white to do that got all the nooks and crannies wash it all out did the inside of the barrel for the housing where the clutch goes and where the input shaft is because it was just caked full of dust um, cleaned all that out got it all ready and then what you want to do is um, you need something that's going to etch acid etch itself in there so keyword there is etch um, so you want to put an etch on this before you do anything else so you want to etch it and if you want to you can epoxy it then seal it and paint it and clear coat it and that's exactly what I did with this so um, the acid etch really bites into the metal and it allows everything to adhere really well everything after that epoxy is the same way epoxy will etch into this um, casing and it will actually allow the sealer and the paint and everything else to stick to it so that's the key is just the prep work honestly just a little quick rundown of it but it's just pretty much what this is is it's a silver sealer through house of color they used to make I've got a quart of it and I haven't used it so I thought I would just use it and I just clear coated right over top of it so it's just silver sealer and clear coat and that's about it so that's a quick rundown if you ever want to do something like this it's a lot of hard work you got to find out how you can hang it and do all that stuff and paint it but once you get it painted and everything you got to worry about scratching it and all that stuff once you get in the car it looks really good a lot of people just use like a spray can from East Bay for this type of stuff, silver paint. But this way, I think this will last a little bit longer than spray canning it, but it turned out really, really nice. It's got a lot of flake in it, a lot of aluminum. So yeah, I just want to make a quick video to show you guys what I'm up to. If anything interesting comes along, I'll, I'll put it in and I'll make a video for you guys. But like I said, I got probably another few days on this thing. And then uh, the fun part will begin of getting this thing running and driving down the road. So stay tuned for the other videos. Um, don't have anything. Once I get this thing running, I'm going to be switching back to doing some air. i got some airbrush projects I need to do. Um, and those seem to do really, really well. So I'm really excited to pick up the airbrush again because I haven't done that in a while. And uh, make some videos for you guys. Um, airbrushing some stuff so my lights just went out for some reason so um, but yeah once that comes around we'll uh we'll start the painting again guys sorry for the delay and thanks for hanging in there um if you want to know anything you know comment down below i'll be happy to answer and talk to you guys about it but yeah i'm just being a mechanic right now so nothing really exciting so i'll see you guys on the next one